Speculations of the existence of yetis, the monstrous human-like creatures living in snowy mountains, have always been a mystery to humans. What is it about these mythical animals that compel tens of thousands of people to claim to have seen them year after year, and even prompt some to go to the Himalayas in search of them? Is it a man, a bear, an ape? or a mixture of all of these, a humanoid. Today, in this video, we will debunk the truth behind these mysteries and uncover the secrets behind this Himalayan monster, Yeti. Stay tuned till the end so that you don't miss out on these important secrets. Yeti's sightings and mythical stories are centuries old in the Himalayan mountains approximately 350 years to pre-Buddhist Eastern cultures. Many Himalayan cultures even have this creature and is known as the glacier being. The local inhabitants believe that these yetis are shy. Most of the sightings of these hairy snowmen were in the isolated Himalayan areas that fall in Nepal and Tibet. The name yeti sounds poetic, but it is far from its literal translation. In the local Sherpa language, the word yeti means that thing there. Initially, the creature was assumed to be a fictitious character from the tales told by Nepalese parents to scare off their children and stop them from wandering far into the wild. Around 350 years ago, a Buddhist monk named Sangwa Dorj went up to a distant cave near Pangbosh for meditation. This is when the Yetis became part of Buddhist history. It is believed that one of the Yeti helped Dorj and brought food, water, and wood for him. When this Yeti died, Dorj kept his scalp and a hand as a reminder of Yeti's kindness. Later, this Buddhist monk constructed a temple and kept these Yeti parts as relics in the temple. You might be wondering why these relics did not make the Yetis famous around the world. But that is not the case. This mythical and mysterious creature, Yeti, gained popularity in the 1950s when a giant footprint was found during an expedition on Mount Everest. When these stories caught the attention of the Westerners in the 50s, it was mistranslated. They gave him a fearful name, the Abominable Snowman. Eric Shipton, a British mountaineer, discovered huge footprints at the bottom portion of a glacier in the Himalayas. These footprints were around 12 or 13 inches long and wide, around double the size of a human foot. Shipton's images prompted hundreds of trips into the Himalayas in search of more evidence of Yeti. The famous Edmund Hillary, the first to reach the summit of Mount Everest, also claimed the discovery of a tuft of thick, long black hair at an altitude of 19,000 feet on Everest. Hillary also led an expedition to find a living yeti, but was unsuccessful. Yetis became quite famous around the world. The existence of yeti was so widespread that in 1959, the US State Department issued guidelines on how people should act when they find a yeti. Moreover, the Tibetan administration also put out signboards on the top mentioning the rules. To be with a yeti, an official permit was mandatory, and the mountaineers had to pay a yeti tax. Hunters were not allowed to kill a yeti until the situation became severe. They were allowed to catch them alive and take photographs. Furthermore, it was mandatory to report the findings to the Tibetan administration beforehand. The search for yeti turned out to be the cause of enormous expeditions to the Himalayas. No doubt, tourism got a great push from this. Since then, such expeditions by TV presenters, scientists, and researchers have been looking for this Himalayan monster. Dr. Makoto Nobuka, a Japanese scholar and hiker, revealed the findings of his 12-year investigation in 1983, hypothesizing that the word yeti is a distortion of the word meti, a regional dialect name for a bear. According to Nobuka, Tibetans fear the Yeti and worship this creature as a supernatural figure. Unfortunately, Nabuka's allegations were slammed. Later in 2007, American television host Joshua Gates, along with his Destination Truth team, 
claimed to have discovered multiple footprints in Nepal's Everest area. These footprints resembled Yeti descriptions. Similar to Shipton's footprints, these footprints were around 32 centimeters long and 23 centimeters broad. The prints of these footprints were developed for additional investigation. Jeffrey Meldrum from the Idaho State University analyzed the footprints. Initially, Jeffrey thought these footprints to be morphologically man-made, but later changed his mind. In 2008, hairs obtained from Garrow Hills in the Himalayas were studied by primatologist Anna Nakaris and microscopy specialist John Wells of Oxford Brookes University. The tests didn't produce any substantial results. Later, an ape conservation expert, Ian Redmond, found that the cuticle pattern was a match to the specimens of Edmund Hillary in the 1950s. This hair sample was donated to the Oxford University Museum of Natural History for further DNA analysis. It was found that the hair belonged to the Himalayan goral, a goat-like creature. Again in 2009, Gates also conducted another expedition and discovered some hair samples. They were sent for a DNA test and an unknown DNA sequence was found. Sometimes people take advantage of the trend. In 2011, during a conference held in Russia, scientists and enthusiasts claimed to have 95% evidence about the existence of Yeti. But later it was disputed and considered a hoax. Research continued in search of evidence for the existence of Yeti. In 2013, research by Oxford University changed everything and concluded that the Japanese researcher, Dr. Makota, was somewhere right in his claim. In 2013, a leading UK geneticist, Brian Sykes, called out a worldwide request for samples of hair or other tissue from previously unknown species known as cryptids. He received around 30 samples from different places around the world. Sykes focused mainly on two samples that were received from the Himalayan region. One was received from Ladakh and the other was from Bhutan. Both the places were located around 700 to 800 miles away from each other, but belonged to Himalayan regions. Surprisingly, testing revealed a 100% match with a polar bear from the Svartbar region, located in the north of Norway. These samples matched with a species that was around 40,000 to 120,000 years old. Syke described them as completely interesting and entirely unexpected results. These results gave a new dimension to the Yeti tale. Syke did not conclude thoroughly as he wanted to interpret the results more thoroughly before making any statement. Moreover, in 2014, a DNA examination of 30 hair samples of cryptids thought to be of Yetis also found a match with Paleolithic polar bears, other bears, and canines. One of the samples was also from a hybrid bear. Icon Films was working on a documentary about the Himalayan monster in 2016. They asked Charlotte Lindqvist and a team of scientists to investigate the sample they had collected assumed to be of Yeti. Charlotte Lindqvist is a scientist at the University of Buffalo in the Department of Biological Sciences. She examined 24 samples using mitochondrial DNA that included hair, bone, skin and stool. Mitochondrial DNA sequences is used in archaeology. This helps the archaeologist to reveal the answers to centuries-old fossils. Previously, scientists have used this DNA sequencing for the fossilized human excrement samples discovered from an Oregon cave, which enabled them to determine that the human existence in the US was at least 14,000 years old. Linkfist and his team found that the Yeti samples originated from a Himalayan brown bear and a black bear. One of the teeth belonged to a member of the dog family. One of the samples from the monastery was found to be of a black bear. Another sample from the Tibetan monastery was of a brown bear. Although this research disappointed the locals and Yeti fans, according to Linkfist, it will help scientists to understand the evolution of local bears. These Himalayan brown bears are a severely endangered subspecies of normal brown bears that are also on the verge of extinction. 
The International Union for Conservation of Nature has also declared the Asian black bears as endangered species. All these species are in danger due to illegal hunting, trading of animal parts, as well as degradation of the habitat. Thanks to these researches done on yetis in the past five decades, which pointed us to the extinction of these exciting new bear species, a critical conversation message. It should be noted that the Himalayan brown bear isn't simply another bear. It's one of the ancient species of bear that requires scientific attention and strict conservation. We hope that this video leaves no doubt in your mind about the existence of yetis. At last, the scientists and researchers were able to debunk the mysteries and secrets behind this Himalayan yeti that remained unconcluded for the past seven decades. Let Yeti remain alive in the mythological stories and folklore of the Himalayan people. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please share it with your friends who would love to know about the mysteries and secrets of the Himalayan monster, Yeti. Subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of our future interesting videos.